My name is Jeremy Walton, and I want to talk about the future of cinema. Let's go! A lot has been happening in theaters lately. Maybe things are changing for the better. I'm a fan of going to the movies. I remember the $5 matinees every Sunday. I did that for years, and it wasn't too long ago AMC Theaters rolled out their AMC A-List program. I did a little video about that. Some things have changed, but I'm still using it and have slowly started to see more and more movies like the good old days. A big part of what's happening is the whole streaming services that got a huge bump over the last couple years when everyone was staying at home. So I do want to cover those details as well. I'll also talk about specific films and have a few quotes from filmmakers about their opinions on the future of theaters and cinema. The place I want to start is in 2019 with the great Martin Scorsese. I don't think he really needs an introduction, but he made some comments about Marvel movies that you're probably aware of. Now, I'm not going to say he's right or wrong or agree or disagree. I can see where he's coming from, and I can see the other side's opinion as well. It's a good idea to understand both, and you can choose as a filmmaker the path you want to pursue based on your own thoughts. Here's what Scorsese said. I don't see them. I tried, you know, but that's not cinema. Honestly, the closest I can think of them, as well made as they are, with actors doing the best they can under the circumstances, is theme parks. It isn't the cinema of human beings trying to convey emotional, psychological experiences to another human being. Forming an opinion based on a quote of what somebody said is never a good idea. There's plenty of follow-up articles better describing what he meant that you should read. I want to give you one more quote he said because it'll come up later in a couple of the other examples. If you're going to tell me that it's simply a matter of supply and demand and giving the people what they want, I'm going to disagree. It's a chicken and egg issue. If people are given only one kind of thing and endlessly sold only one kind of thing, of course they're going to want more of that one kind of thing. So what's going on here? Is that what it all boils down to? The studios are pumping out content that makes everyone want it? All I can say is I like a lot of different movies. The reasons I go to Marvel movies are different than movies like The Last Duel, directed by Ridley Scott, which is the next film I want to talk about. I would like to see every movie in the theater. I really do enjoy going, but sometimes I don't have the time. It's been a long day, it's 10 p.m., and I just want to rent a movie. That's what I did for The Last Duel. It is interesting though, and something to think about is the movies you'll go see in the theater for sure, compared to some you don't mind seeing at home. You know, that makes a difference in what movies get a theatrical or streaming release. I enjoyed The Last Duel, and for the most part it had good reviews. With a hundred million dollar plus budget and a bunch of star names, I was on board, and the way the story was told reeled me in. Unfortunately, the movie flopped at the box office and Ridley Scott had an idea of why. In an interview, he said, I think what it boils down to, what we got today are the audience who were brought up on these cell phones. This makes me think back to when I was a kid. There was only a handful of movies out each month and movies I saw were liked or disliked by kids my age or even adults. Nowadays, that gap between teenagers and seniors isn't just an age thing. It's a technology thing. It's a social media thing. It's how you receive your content. There's just a lot more, let's call it stuff, that separates generations. And in this example, it's a cell phone. These are things you have to constantly be thinking about as a filmmaker. Which brings me to my next example, and that will be Jurassic World Dominion, directed by Colin Trevorrow. I was lucky enough to experience some really great cinematic moments in the theater, like the dinosaurs in the original Jurassic Park, directed by Steven Spielberg. That's still a movie I watch from time to time because it was really a defining moment in what you can achieve on the big screen. Now we have Jurassic World Dominion, and the actor Sam Neill had something to say when not only comparing the two movies, but also how much the audience has changed. He thinks the slow burn approach Spielberg used wouldn't work with today's audiences. I've never seen action like this. An audience 30 years later wouldn't find that pace acceptable. As a result, this has action from the moment the lights go down. Though, of course, it has quiet moments. Haven't seen the movie yet? If you have, comment below with your thoughts comparing Dominion to the original. Another film I want to mention that I did a video about was the cinematography of The Northman, which I'm glad I got to see in the theater, but go watch my breakdown to hear all about it. The reason I bring it up is Robert Eggers has done some great work in directing, but The Northman had a significant budget that basically had a disappointing performance at the box office, even though, again, having great reviews. With the disappointing return, Eggers was asked about his future and trying to avoid a similar result. 
I need to re-strategize in terms of what I'm pitching to a studio. Like how do I be me and survive in this environment? Because while they wouldn't have me anyway, I wouldn't want to direct a Marvel movie, and I'm also not going to try to get the rights to Spawn or something either. An interesting turn of events is The Northman is actually doing well on VOD. Am I disappointed that three to four weeks in we're on VOD because that's the way things are done in the post-COVID world? Yeah, but it's doing great on VOD, so there you go. If your movie bombs at the box office but kills it on VOD, is that a success? If it makes tons of money but no awards, is that a failure? We can look at it in so many ways. I think a theatrical release has been the norm for so long. Filmmakers of today grew up going to the movies. They grew up wanting to make movies and see them in the theater. If you grow up watching everything on your phone, it's hard to explain to that person why they need to go to the theater to see your movie. But it's also important to understand your movie isn't a failure because it's released on a streaming platform. It's not a surprise people are not sure what to do. They're rethinking their strategy, just like Warner Brothers releasing a slate of films on HBO Max. That had a lot of backlash from filmmakers, which is understandable. There's a lot more to it, I won't go into it, but it was a big sign that things are changing. In some cases, it's changing week to week. I think the last two years just sped up this process, so it's hard to really lock down this environment we're in. A movie can flop one day, blaming people aren't ready to go back to the theaters, then Top Gun Maverick opens and destroys all expectations and becomes Tom Cruise's biggest opening of his career. Love that movie. If you love the movie, have a look at the cinematography of Top Gun Maverick, a lot of good info about the production, and even some old clips from the original movie that shows how it all went down. One streaming platform that had its stock soaring over the last couple years was Netflix. We all know Netflix. I had it back in the day when it was just DVDs. Then for the first time, they reported a loss of subscribers and the stock tanked losing billions. Netflix is now talking about an ad-based subscription, which some think won't work, while other services have been providing it for a while. It seems like what works for one company doesn't work for others. Just recently, Season 4 Volume 1 of Stranger Things was released, and I of course watched. It actually took me a couple episodes to get into it. I mean, it has been like three years and everybody grew up. It started a little slow, but didn't disappoint. I bring this up because this season broke records. It was viewed 287 million hours, landing in the number one position. You see, everything is all over the place, and it's hard to make sense of it all. Some people try, it seems like they're guessing though. There were even whispers about Apple buying Netflix, which would be awesome, probably not gonna happen. Speaking of Apple and the filmmakers who most likely watch my videos, I did a video covering the shot on iPhone campaign and what it all means. More importantly, my thoughts on the future of Apple TV+, Plus, which relates to what we're discussing in this video. I think time is what we need to figure this all out. I'm sure there's going to be other changes to the platforms, prices will most likely go up, theaters will try and get people back in their seats, and streaming services will have to try and acquire more customers who don't sign up for a month, watch what they like, then cancel their membership. It's going to be a lot of trial and error. I'm sure there will be some major acquisitions between companies to have only a few major streaming platforms, and the days of going to the theaters might be numbered. Or I could be completely wrong. The one thing that won't change is how much I love movies. Well, there you have it, the future of cinema. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that like button because there's definitely more in the way. Subscribe so you don't miss out. Leave a comment if you want to. Until next time, it's a wrap. Thank you.